Model steam engines, useful design ideas part two. A Stuart 504 boiler plant layout showing the component parts. I made this video way back in 2012 and it was silent other than some music playing in the background. I wanted to revisit it in this series to show the importance of having the parts on the baseboard symmetrically placed. First of all, I'll run through all the parts and tell you what they are. This first part on the right hand side is the condenser oil trap. It's really only an oil trap to catch the oil, because if the oil goes up the chimney, it's going to make a mess inside the boiler and on the baseboard. A condenser oil trap is quite important. Not on a steam locomotive, that's entirely different, but on a stationary steam plant, you need to catch the oil. This is not a steam plant as such, it's a boiler plant. I find this a better way to do it with larger boilers rather than have the boiler next to the steam engine. More like the full size. Generally the boiler is in the boiler room and the engine is in the engine room. The overall layout of this boiler plant is pleasing to the eye. The condenser oil trap and the water reservoir tank are more or less exactly the same. Made from the same diameter copper with almost identical brass top caps and bases. This gives a very pleasing overall balance to the boiler plant. As there is only one hand pump, that has to sit by itself, and in this instance the hand pump is very close to the check valve, so you can be quite artistic with a short length of copper pipe. On top of the condenser oil trap is the condensate drain tap. This has a pipe that goes all the way to the bottom of the condenser inside to drain the condensate once the tank is full. I would normally attach a length of silicone rubber tubing to the condensate drain tap so I could drain the mixture of oil and water into a suitable receptacle. On the right hand side of the condenser oil trap is the exhaust inlet from the engine. And on this particular design of condenser oil trap, the lower fitting in the right hand side of the oil trap is the exhaust outlet to the chimney. This has an internal pipe that goes all the way to the top of the tank. In between the condenser oil trap and the water tank is the steam turret. You don't have to wash out the boiler every 14 days. It's just a nice brass nameplate that I had that looked good when I stuck it on top of the turret. Thinking about it though, I could have mounted a whistle on the turret, which I do sometimes. A bit of information about the boiler itself. A 504 boiler is the largest of the series. There's a 500, a 501 and a 504. As previously shown, there is a boiler feed hand pump fitted to this plant. And this Stuart hand pump has a half inch diameter ram so it fills the boiler quickly. I made a nice brass extension handle for it. In this clip you can also see fitted to the boiler the water gauge drain tap and the drain pipe. This is used to blow down the water temporarily to clear any air bubbles from the glass. That is so you can always see exactly how much water you have in the boiler. Now for a bit more detail, this is the condenser oil trap. The tap at the top is the condensate drain valve. And in the middle, with the pipe internally going right to the top, is the clean steam outlet that goes to the chimney. But it's not fed from the centre of the tank, there is a pipe internally that makes sure that only steam from the top part of the tank goes up the chimney. And once again, the reason for the oil trap is so that the oil residue does not go everywhere, and there is no gurgling of water up the chimney, which would not be a good thing. It's time now to light the fire to boil the water. This is the original twin spirit burner being put in place. Alternatively, a gas burner could be used. These spirit burners provide a lot of heat, steam is raised quickly. This clip shows me using the hand pump to make sure that the water level in the boiler is correct. When raising steam with gas or spirit burners, it's a good idea not to fill the boiler too full of water. But once the burner is lit, you must keep your eye on the water level at all times. As I've already mentioned, these spirit burners really do provide a lot of heat, and in no time at all, 25 pounds per square inch of pressure is showing on the pressure gauge. And in a remarkably short time, working pressure of 60 pounds per square inch is reached, and the safety valve starts to blow off. Here's a safety valve blowing off, and this is a problem. 
because with a spirit burner you cannot regulate the heat. Gas firing is slightly more complex, but it does have its advantages. Normally what you would do, if you weren't taking the steam out of the boiler to an engine, you would turn down the gas pressure. This clip shows how much heat is being generated. Even with the steam valves open, the boiler still keeps the pressure up. This would not have happened had I have thought in the first place to fit a steam engine into the circuit. But now my workshop is soon completely full of steam, which is not very good for the tools in there and makes them go rusty. This boiler has been in steam for a while and there is still a good fire from the spirit burner. It's time, I think, to close the steam turret valves. That way the pressure gauge will blow off, but I can soon stop that by pumping in some cold water. This boiler has been in steam now for over 15 minutes and now the heat from the spirit burner is starting to diminish. There is still more than enough heat coming from the burner even after 15 minutes to keep the steam pressure high in the boiler. The spirit tank is nearly empty after about 20 minutes. Even without a fire under the boiler, the residual heat is still raising steam. These 504 boilers really are quite efficient. Being a Babcock design of boiler, where it has external water tubes, as opposed to internal fire tubes, the boiler actually holds much more water. I really do like Stuart 504 boilers, and they're ideal for powering most of the Stuart model's range of quality steam engines. One disadvantage of a 504 boiler is its centre of gravity, which is high, so it's not a good idea to use one in a model boat. Centreflue boilers, which are a different type, are normally used in model boats. And that is it. I think this is a very useful video for beginners, that's why I voiced it over. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.